people need Jesus. I was talking with the, David sent that video over to me this morning, and I was I messaged him back. I said, what an interesting ministry. Um, yeah, I talk with a lot of our, our students, you know, uh, a lot of our students within this digital age are, are very involved in, in things just like we saw on the screen, virtual reality. And it's something we must consider, I think, this morning and, and even as we, we move forward in, in life is uh, in this digital age, there's a lot of people that are hurting and there's a lot of people that are using the digital realm to try to escape and hide from their hurt. And what a beautiful picture of people that are going into that realm and finding people like that young lady and telling them about the love of Jesus Christ. If you turn with me in, in God's word today to Proverbs chapter six, that's where we're gonna be this morning. And this morning's message is entitled Living with Purpose and Rejecting Passivity. Um, boy, I love that last song that we just sang, and I was just sitting there thinking, like, would that really be our heart cry this morning? Just take my life, Lord, everything I got, all of me, and make me be used for your purposes. And so what I want us to consider this morning is, what is our purpose in life? How are we living life? What are we living life for? Are we living for the desires of the flesh and gravitating towards sluggishness within life? Or are you and I, are we living our life with purpose? And we're gonna understand this morning, we're gonna break down through what is our purpose in life? What has God called us to? And then we're gonna see the dangers. If I reject said purpose, we're gonna see the dangers in Proverbs chapter six of what happens. A life that is truly an empty void um, where oftentimes if we reject God's purpose for us, we're gonna to try to fill it with things that simply will never live up to the standard. Proverbs 6, 6 through 11 says this, go to the ant, O sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. Without having any chief, officer, or ruler, she prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food in harvest. How long will you lie there, O sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man. Let's pray. God, as we come before you this morning, um, Lord, we are a people that, is, that are very, very easily distracted. Lord, we are a busy people. And Lord, within a world of distractions, within a world of busyness, oftentimes we know that we exchange your truth, Lord, for lies. Lord, I pray that you would encourage and inspire us and challenge us this morning through your word to live life with kingdom-minded purpose, to be a people that take responsibility and that honor you and make your name known through the way that we live. Lord, we lift these matters to you and we pray them in your name, amen. Now, obviously Thursday we observed Thanksgiving. I was telling somebody this morning, Thanksgiving I believe is my favorite holiday. Now some of y'all would, would think otherwise, but it's my favorite and I think much of that is in, in, due to the fact I enjoy eating. Um, I ate very well. Thursday night, then I had other times during the week I also ate very well. But now I know many of you might be like me. Thursday, whatever it is, you may have eaten lunch or a big lunch or maybe you ate a big dinner or maybe you ate a big lunch and a big dinner or a big breakfast, a big lunch and a big dinner. You eat that food and then you get to a point where you feel regret, okay? You've eaten a lot. If you've prepared, your, if you're like me, I, I won't eat anything in the first part of the day and I, I make it in my mind, well, if I don't eat anything for breakfast and lunch, then I can eat as much as I want at dinner and it's not a bad thing. But then it always ends up feeling bad after the fact, right? Because what do you wanna do? We, we stuff the food within us, we enjoy it, it's savory. But then, much like this individual you see on the screen, you might just wanna lay on the couch after that. Maybe take a long nap, 
Maybe the next morning you just don't want to get out of bed when that alarm sounds. What was enjoyable to the taste and those moments suddenly turns into feelings of sluggishness. You feel like you can't get off the couch. Now some of you may be worried I'm going to be talking about gluttony this morning. I'm not talking about gluttony, so don't have to worry about that. Um, But what I want us to think about this morning is input affects our output. What we put in affects what we put out. Just in the, as in the illustration with Thanksgiving, we put a lot of food in us, we may enjoy it, but there's gonna be an output issue at the other side of it where we're gonna feel sluggish. It's gonna be hard to, to press onward. And I, I'd like to invite you just to consider with me a moment just the present day culture that we live within. And to consider how the present day culture we live within, how is that affecting our purpose in our pursuit within life. You know, within the culture we live within today, it's never been easier to take it easy. I told somebody this morning, you can lay on the couch and you can have your groceries delivered to your front door. You don't even have to go to the grocery store. You don't any longer have to go to a restaurant. You can go onto an application on your phone and get somebody to deliver your food right to the table. We're a people of convenience. It's never been easier to to hide out from responsibility. You say, well, how is that so? Many of us know there are 101 million things we can do to distract us from what we know is our responsibility, right? Think about it today. Never has it been more easy to casually drift into mindlessness. You know, we just looked at this idea of the the, the virtual realm that we, we live within, the digital age, Right at our fingertips on our phone, we can get whatever we want whenever we want it, right? Never has it been easy to casually drift into mindlessness. And the reality is, is the hours we spend in front of screens, and let's mind ourselves this morning. A lot of people may think, well, technology, that's just a young person's problem. No, this is all ages at this point in time. We understand it. We all have different struggles with it. We struggle with self-control, And we have to realize the hours we spend in front of screens, the pursuit that we have of an envious dream. We're going to talk this morning. Some of us say, well, I'm not a sluggard. I'm hard at work. Maybe you're hard at work as a busybody. You're not living life with true purpose. You're just busying yourself and distracting yourself from the true purpose. And what that's leaving in its wake is numbing Effects. We see it in restaurants, people glued to their phone instead of talking with each other at the table. We see it within the problem of fatherlessness within our country where mothers and children are left in desperate situations because men don't take responsibility. We find it within portions of our population that are engulfed within a mental health crisis. We have a mental health crisis on our hand and in many cases it's because the mind is tapping out because it's been feasting on excess mindlessness. It can no longer understand how to function within the real world because it's constantly checking out. In an age of instant information, convenient connections, endless entertainment and pleasurable pursuits, we must stand vigilant and sober-minded. Understanding the world we live in is a playground of what I would kind of refer to as an individualistic pursuit. How can I serve my needs? And whenever we serve the needs of the individualistic pursuit, what do we typically gravitate towards? Obviously, selfishness. And then it's going to be nearly impossible for us to live with the purpose that God has intended for us to live within. Right? It undermines the fabric of what God has created us for. So here's how we're going to kind of do this this morning. We're going to take a few moments kind of at the start. We're going to lay out, well, what is my purpose in life? For some of us, we just need to kind of quickly hash through, well, if I want to be a person that's not just the busybody, that's not just the lazy person or the sluggard, how do I live life with a proper purpose and pursuit? And then we're going to warn from Proverbs 6, what I read a few moments ago, warn of the disastrous effects, the disastrous effects of that individualistic ideal. What happens when we decide to go into our shell and serve our own needs before we serve the Lord. Understanding that we have a God-given responsibility, right? That we can't give in to the elements of comfort and passivity and selfishness because though we may find moments of pleasure in those things, 
Ultimately, it's going to be an empty void that it's going to leave behind. That will deliver nothing, okay? And so the big deal this morning is I was created by God to go forth for his glory. That's the purpose, ultimately, of what I have been created for, to walk by faith in his provisions, in his promises. When we think about not being lazy or a sluggard or passive, I don't want you to think, well, I got to have willpower to get myself to... No, it's not about willpower. It's about understanding the finished work that Christ has accomplished for us and to walk within purpose and freedom as we move on from there. Sacrificially leading out instead of cowardly hiding out. So we've said input affects output. And then as we look at it, I kind of was thinking this morning about Galatians 5. Galatians 5, 16 says, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. What I put in matters. If I don't walk in the way of the flesh, and I'm walking in the way of the Lord, walking in step with the Spirit, I'm going to be fleeing from the things that I know do not honor God, and I'm going to be living with the purpose that He created us for. So let's think a few moments, take a few moments to consider, well, what is my purpose? What are the things that I must consider when I understand what God has created me for? Here's the first one to consider this morning is we must understand our identity. We must understand our identity. I think of 1 Peter 1, 13 through 16. It says, therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. We got to be prepared for action. We got to walk within obedience to the Lord, no longer conforming to the flesh. We have, like I mentioned previously, we live within a pre playground of that individualism that is trying to draw us into fleshly ideals. What this is saying, I have to have my eyes fixed upon Christ, the hope of Jesus, right? Our living, our living hope. For some of us in Sunday school this morning, we talked about how Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. He resurrected. He is our living hope. He is the one that we must fix our eyes upon. Grasping for us the fact that my joy, your joy, is no longer a free agent to fleshly desire and impulse. Many of us in this room allow our desires to be free agents to fleshly impulse. It's true. I mean, going back to the technological dynamic, I mean, I think all of us have to put a check on ourselves of when I get free moments in my day, what am I doing with it? What it, am I allowing myself to serve the needs of fleshly desire? Or am I seeking to live in a way where my joy is secured in Christ alone? So I got to understand my identity when I consider purpose. And when I consider my purpose, I also must consider my home. I must consider my home. Hebrews 13, 14 through 16 says, For we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Through him, then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. For the believer, this earth is not our home. We must begin living with a mindset that's focused on building his heavenly kingdom instead of building an earthly kingdom, right? Building his heavenly kingdom instead of building an earthly kingdom. Kingdom. You look here as it, at the end of that, that text in Hebrews, it says, don't neglect to do good and to share, right? What does fleshly impulse says, hog it for myself, don't share, right? Look out for my own needs, but this is saying, don't neglect to do good and to share what you have. For what does that say? Those are sacrifices that are pleasing to God. We must hold loosely to the cares of the world and cling tightly to Christ, and live in such a way that glorifies him. Here's the next thing to consider is we must understand the element of work, right? It says in 2 Thessalonians 3, 10 through 12, for even when we were with you, we would give you this command. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. For we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busy bodies. Now such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own 
living. You think about, as I mentioned earlier, work is really tied within the fabric of how God made us. With the students, we've been doing a whole series on Wednesday nights on the subject of identity. And you look back within Ge- in Genesis, God gave men his, his, gave us responsibility, right? He gave us the task of, of work. He created us to work and take initiative within opportunities he gives us, right? With the skills he provides us with and all for his glory alone. Now, it must be noted, too, to consider, well, how do I, how do I understand this work? Now, I know there's some of you in the room today, you might, might hear the need to, well, a man must work to be able to provide for his family. And some of you may say, well, I'm not able to work. Maybe you have disability or maybe there's, you're at a point in your life where you're retired. And maybe some of you, have, as you've entered that stage and season of life, maybe it's been a struggle. You've struggled to find purpose because for years and years you did work. You sought to be an example and a light in the field that you worked, and then suddenly now you're trying to to figure out now what's next, right? Now, we have to think about work is more than just some kind of physical output that I do, right? Because we understand for some of us that physical output we're not able to do as such. That doesn't mean that we're to be put on the shelf or, or we're used goods. No, God has still given us clear purpose. We can still work and carry out in life for his glory. We can still make impacts upon other people. We can still invest in ways that will bear fruit and kingdom impact, right? God created us to work and take initiative in the opportunities he's given us with the skills he provides us with all for his glory alone. And here's the the final thing to consider about purpose is we must understand our calling, right? Yes, God created us to work. We need to take responsibility in life. We need to, you know... uh, Men need to, to, to take on the roles that men are to take on. Women are to take on the roles that women are to take on. When within our field of, of occupation, we should be those that are striving to put our best foot forward and honor him. But above all else, we are called to make his name known. What is our, our mission here at First, Pap- First Baptist? It's, we are to be disciples who are making disciples. And that's what we see in Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Christian faith is not a cover, hide, and wait scenario. It's not based in passivity. Well, if I check that off the list, I got my fire insurance, and now I'm just going to wait until Jesus returns or calls me home. No, the Christian faith is a go, send, and tell faith, right? Calling people out of the darkness and into the light, calling people to repent of their sins and believe in Jesus. Our purpose is to make him known. Reflecting back to that video, you look at that that young guy that was entering the virtual reality field to make his name known to lost people. Now, I understand that some of you in here might be like, well, that would not be my my mission field, but each of us have a mission field that God has called us to, right? Here, right, in our area, and then around the world. We have to be taking his name and sharing him with others. Consider this morning when you think about my purpose in life, where is my harvest field? Who are the people in my life that I need to invest in? And am I too busy being a busybody I got to work my job. I got to make money to provide and put put food on the table. Or I have all these things, you know, I have my hobbies. I have things I enjoy. But nothing trumps what God has put as the ultimate calling upon our lives, which is to make disciples who make disciples, right? All right, so that's purpose. We see our purpose within that. Now let's bounce back to where we started reading at the beginning today in Proverbs chapter six. So we see here's my purpose You know, I need to be that person that's understanding my identity being in Christ. I need to understand this is not my home. I need to understand God created me to take responsibility and work using the skills he has given me to his glory. I understand my calling. I got to make his name known. But what about if I don't do that? What if we're in the room this morning and maybe we are failing to take on his purpose for our life? Maybe we are the perfect person that's kind of going into the reclusive states or the individualistic ideal, or we're consumed within the entertainment-driven world that we live in. Here is what we're going to see in Proverbs 6. 
What does that ultimately result in? And Proverbs 6 through 8 is where, where we'll begin here. With the first point is considering healthy initiative. Now, going back, Solomon here says, Go to the Anno sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise. Without having any chief, officer, or ruler, she prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food in harvest. You know, one of the things I enjoy about Proverbs is some of the way it's worded. It's, it's kind of, you know, there, there's some, almost some humor within it. You, th- you think about, as he talks about, a tiny, minuscule ant. Now, some of y'all hear the term ant, and you may be like me at first. You're like, that's the thing at the end of the summer that tries to take over my kitchen, and I have to call in the, the exterminator to go, go deal with that. Uh, but it is, if you've ever taken time to just stop and look at how ants function, right? If you, just taking the time, you, you think about the ant without having anyone breathe down its neck. It takes initiative to prepare and gather and do it. It does so, they do so very meticulously. They're interesting little, little beings. You see them, they're going in those little lines and, you know, it happened at our, our house back last year. We came and I, I had a honey, a thing of honey that was sitting up in the cabinet. It was left open just a little bit. Brittany's like, why are you telling this to people about our, about our kitchen? <laughs> our kitchen is clean now. The exterminator came. And those things had found that honey and they were going in and getting it and they were getting stuff, carrying it on back. You see that little trail? What are they doing? They're preparing. They're thriving and surviving because what? They're taking action to prepare and gather. And what they're able to do is they're even able to help each other when those winter months come from what they've been able to gather and harvest in days before. Systematic approach, scattering around, gathering in order to provide and thrive. And it's interesting how he uses something so minuscule as the ant to shame something so ignorant like us. Right? So mighty we seem to be. And here he is using the example of the ant to really shame us. Right? Exposing the tendency of mankind to fail at taking initiative, to fail to plan, to fail to prepare, living moment to moment. Like I mentioned earlier, perhaps you're like, oh, I'm busy at work. Well, I'm just kind of busy at work trying to keep up with each day. I'm not putting much thought into the future. I'm not really considering how my actions today are affecting the people around me. I'm just kind of running around like a chicken with my head cut off, right? And that's not what we want. That's not what we're looking for here. You know, I was thinking about Brittany and I, we just went and saw my parents this past week. And when we go on trips, uh, Brittany is excellent at packing. I'm not the best at packing. I pack things that I can think of, but she's got a detailed list I always, I'm not a detailed list person. I need to become a detailed list person. I need to preach to myself this morning. That's what I need to do. She'll have a detailed list of all these different things that never fails. Something may come up with the girls or something may come up that we need. And she had it on her checklist. And we can check it right on off, right? She's preparing. She's taking action. She's looking ahead to what could potentially happen so that if it does, what happens? We're ready. We don't miss a beat. You know, going back to, to verse six through eight, you know, you, you see here with the ant, obviously a life of preparation. And what do you see with the foolish man? A life of passivity. Now, while the world pursues the fleeting pursuit of instant gratification and pleasure in the flesh, that's what the world pursues. That's what our flesh yearns for. I want instant gratification. And as we said at the beginning, never has it been easier to get instant gratification. Everything's at our fingertips. Oftentimes, we don't have to exert much of anything to be able to get what we want. The Christian, though, should walk in the lasting presence of contentment and joy in Jesus Christ. What happens in that? His presence, his provision, fueling our initiative, fueling our steps, an initiative that's focused upon his kingdom. I think about Proverbs 24, 27. Prepare your work outside. Get everything ready for yourself in the field. And after that, build your house, thinking ahead, preparing. Proverbs 21, 5, the plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty comes only to poverty. If I'm just living life hastily, just trying to get by, poverty will come knocking on the door. Now, consider with me as we continue here, verse 9 through 11. So you see the example of the, the ant, and now we kind of see what results of the person that is foolish and passive. 
It's not going to take responsibility. It says there in verse 9, How long will you lie there, O sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? You know, there is no room for lazy living within the Christian life. No room for passivity. He asked the man, how long are you going to keep sleeping your life away, wasting it? The presence of his responsibility, his need for initiative to be taken, it exists. But what is he doing? He's choosing to ignore it, to press it off to the side. It says in Proverbs 10, 26, like vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes, so the slacker is to the one who sends him on an errand, right? He's not someone who's going to come through. He's not someone who is ultimately dependable. It says in verse 10, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. You know, that, that term, a little, it's kind of like, you know, I, I just want a little more. You know, it's, it's not much. This, this won't hurt me, but so much. You know, I, I know I have this I need to do, but I... I'd rather do this, passing it off, denoting really a a rationalization displayed from the lazy man. And what does it do? A reasoning that rest is harmless. Now, let's pause there for a second. I'm not saying that we need to live life and never rest. Rest is of necessity, but a healthy kind of rest. Not rest that's just revolving around us. Rest that is allowing us to step back and reflect ultimately on how good he is, his provision, right? Rest should not be something, I, I've thought about this a lot recently, you know, we're at a unique time of year, the holidays. Many of us at the holidays, we get time off from work. We have time, perhaps a vacation. Maybe you're going on trips and you think, boy, maybe you've been living your life just for the next vacation. Just for the next time you get to stop and do something you want to do. That's a a way of living that will ultimately choke you out. Yet again, it's not bad to to rest. We should desire to rest. Not bad to look forward to a vacation. But the pinnacle is not what we get get out of it. Because if that's the case, what's going to happen once that vacation passed? Once the holiday passed? Well, suddenly it's going to be a big downfall. You see it a lot at the holidays. People go through the holidays and maybe they enjoy that time and then some of the darker times in people's life, a lot of times in those early times in January and even into February, and people are feeling just the, the, the discouragement maybe or depression or things begin to well up. The idea and the understanding of how I view rest has to go be beyond just, well, I just need, I just can't wait for the next time I take a break. Now, I want to live my life with purpose every single day. And when time for rest comes, I have been preparing in such a way to be able to enjoy it appropriately. And when I go back to work or my responsibilities, it's not drudgery. It's something that I understand. I've been equipped for this. I'm ready. I'm ready for this, right? But what happens oftentimes, you look at Proverbs 22, 13. The sluggard says, there's a lion outside. I shall be killed in the streets. A lot of times we'll, we'll pass over responsibility because we, we make up rationalizations in our head of, well, I can't do this. There's some danger. We see this with, I mean, what is our ultimate purpose? We, we talked about it. We, we want to be people that go and make his name known. What is one of the things that often keeps us from going and do that? Well, I'm worried what they're going to think about me. I'm worried that I could lose that friendship. I might lose that opportunity. We create, this is the flesh. The flesh is like creating weird scenarios in our head to prevent us and stop us from doing the thing that ultimately leads to freedom and joy, right? It's, it's kind of, I love that illustration of the lion outside. I should be, that is a wonderful picture for us. The next time we get in a situation where we know I have a responsibility, I have an opportunity on the plate, think about it when those doubts come in your mind. I don't want to be that person. I'm going to take on this opportunity. Why? Because it's not in my own strength. It's in the Lord. He's the one that strengthens me and prepares me for it. Not these dreamed up rationalizations. Now, what happens when I take the easy way out? What happens when I begin to live within passivity? It says there that poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man. The rejection of responsibility only leads to a life of poverty. And where is that poverty seen? It's seen mentally, it's seen physically, it's seen emotionally, it's seen spiritually. 
That poverty will come knocking on the door. That idea of, of having want within us. Now, the, image, the imagery of this person's life is, is really, it goes as follows. These are a few things that I, w- I would love for you to take note of. A, a life marked by debilitating clutter is one. Proverbs 24, 30 through 31 says, I went by the field of a slackered and by the vineyard of one lacking sense. Thistles had come up everywhere. Weeds covered the ground and the stone wall was ruined. Proverbs 15, 19, the way of a sluggard is like a hedge of thorns, but the path of the upright is a level highway. The life of someone that's not living with the purpose he was, he was created for is marked by clutter. Consider this morning, what are the areas within our, cl- in our lives that display said clutter? We all have them. The thorns and thistles that are coming up because we're rejecting responsibility. God-given responsibility. Here's the second mark. The person that rejects this, a life mark, it's a life mark by selfish craving, yet perpetual feelings of hunger and ip- emptiness. Proverbs 13, 4. The soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing while the soul of the diligent is richly supplied. This one always gets me, Proverbs 19, 24. The sluggard buries his hand in the dish and will not even bring it back to his mouth, right? It's this desire, I gotta have more of something, but it never delivers. The technological realm, this happens again. Some of you may be on things like social media. It's literally crafted to make this play out within our life so that we keep going back for more, but it's never enough. Well, I gotta see another video. Well, I need to check on somebody else's life. And then you keep going and you keep going and you keep going. And then when it stops, we don't know how to function anymore. That's why I go back to, you you look at the, the mental health crisis that we're in today. Much of that, especially, I see it with young people. It's because it's, we're, we're disconnecting from reality. We're disconnecting from God's intended purpose. And therefore, when it comes time to function, when we get into the valleys, because friends, the valleys will come. Some of you are in the valleys this morning. If we've not been preparing for the valley, the valley will eat us up. We live prepared so when the valley comes, we look to the hand that truly gives, right? We look to the bread of life. We look to the living water. A life... Also, we see here that is marked by lack of preparation and therefore lack of return. The slugger does not plow in the autumn. He will seek at harvest and have nothing. Proverbs 20 and verse 4. We also see it's a life marked by selfish consumption, but it results in destruction. The desire of the slugger kills him, for his hand refused to labor. All day long he craves and craves, but the righteous gives and does not hold back. Proverbs 26, 25 through 26. The life of the lazy hides behind cheap excuses and is smothered by the weeds and thorns of selfish ambitions. It's a, the life that just wants to hit the snooze button on initiative and responsibility to hide under the blankets of comfort just a little bit longer. Many of us in this room are guilty of it. Comfort is a, something we gravitate towards and it makes us be blinded to the responsibilities that we have been given. The life of the sluggard feast upon fleshly gratification only to be found starved of purpose, worth, and joy. So what do we take away from this this morning? So we've seen, here's purpose. This is the God-given purpose that I have. We see this fact of, well, here's what happens if I reject his purpose. Well, the question becomes, well, now what do I do with this? How do, I, how do I begin to be the person that, that takes on initiative and responsibility and that lives the life that God has created me to live? And I think the first one is delight within the Lord. Second, we'll see prepare for action. And then third, take responsibility. That first one, delight within the Lord. I love Galatians 5, 16. We've already mentioned it. I say walk by the Spirit. Walk in step with the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. You may say, well, how do I walk in step with the Spirit? What owns our time? I've been thinking about this recently, like I was talking with David about this the other day. What's the first thing I do when I get up in the morning? If, I, if the first thing I do is I check my phone, well, let me see what the weather is. Oh, wait, I got an email. Let me check this email. Oh, man, something is really bad at work. Well, I'm gonna try to escape that bad thing at work. Let me get on my social media for a few minutes. Then 20 minutes is gone, and we've just wasted that time. 
What if the first thing I did in the morning is, Lord, I'm going to get on my knees beside my bed before I get on my phone, and I'm going to just go before you and just ask for your guidance over this day. I'm going to crack open God's word, and I'm going to spend some time reading, right? we got to create rhythms. Without rhythms, it's really hard to begin to truly delight within the Lord. I cannot delight within the Lord if I never spend time with the Lord. I can't. It's impossible, right? Here's the deal. An idle mind is an idle factory. Notice there, idle, I-D-L-E. That's not not taking initiative. And if I'm that kind of person, I will be an I-D-O-L factory, an idle factory, someone who's going to be continually chasing after things that take my eyes away from him. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and you will find delight. Delight within the Lord. Make that, I I want to hunger and thirst for righteousness. I don't want to follow the desires of my flesh. Prepare for action. Therefore, preparing your minds for action, being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 1, 13. Mindlessness drains us of purpose and dismantles drive. Amidst minefields of mindlessness, we got to keep our eyes and our hope upon Jesus Christ. Christ, right? We cannot continually give in to passivity. I want to take action. I want to be rooted and grounded within the hope of my life, Jesus Christ. And the final thing is take responsibility. Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. We must reject the life of passivity and selfish ambition in exchange for a life that brings glory to God and makes his name known to others. And so as we close here in prayer in a second, I challenge you to consider this morning, what is the purpose of your life? I know in a room like this, like the size of this room this morning, there are some of us, we are not living with purpose. We are are choosing passivity over purpose. I'm here to tell you firmly on what we just studied in God's word, it will wreck your life. There's some of us in here this morning, you're a busy body. You're consistently hustling around and trying to get things covered up. But you're being busy about things that's just trying to keep your head above water instead of being busy for the Lord, spending time in in Him. There's some of us in here this morning, like I mentioned earlier, you may be struggling to find purpose. You're like, I worked for a long time and I had this purpose, but now I don't feel like I have purpose. Maybe this morning you just need to come and surrender before the Lord as, Lord, thank you for the years that you've given me and I wanna use whatever I got left to magnify you. I'm not used goods. I am I'm ready to serve you and however that may be, I wanna be sensitive to the Lord. So as we continue in this holiday season, this is a time, like I said, a lot of us maybe we look forward to this time but we kind of look at it more of just like a vacation or a rest. No, as we go into this holiday season, as we continue towards Christmas, let's look at it purposefully. Like, Lord, thank you for this time, but I want to use these times to just continue to press onward for your glory and your glory alone. Let's pray. God, thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity that you've given us. Lord, we want to be a people that are not passive, Lord, but that take responsibility. Lord, we understand that we are not saved by our works, Jesus, we are saved by your finished work alone. Lord Jesus, you came and lived the perfect life that we could not. You died the death that we deserve and you rose again. You are alive. I pray for the person in here this morning that cannot begin to live for your purpose until they surrender their life to you. I pray now that they would repent of their sins right now in this service, right here, before they even walk out of the doors today and they say, just, just pour out themselves before you and say, Lord, I surrender. I want to live my life for you. Lord, I want to live my life for your purposes. Father, help us, Lord. We are prone to wander, but we want to rest within you alone. We pray these things in your name. Amen.